Good morning. This is Bean Arish, working as assistant professor in IIC department. And the today's topic is UGT operation as well as the varactor diode operation. So in this session, we are going to observe the construction of the UGT and what is the working principle of the unijunction transistor along with the characteristics of the unijunction transistor. Then we also observe that. Uh, what is a varactor diode and what is the principle of a varactor diode. Before going to this, the UDT means actually the transistor. So transistor means it transfers a low resistance device to the high resistance device. And in this case, we have the two types of the transistors. So one is, uh, one is defined as uh, a bipolar junction transistor. Another one is a unijunction transistor. So, in that, uh, again, one more is also there the field effect transistor. Actually, now bipolar junction transistor, BJT means we have the bipolar junction transistor, means uh, the conduction is depends upon both the charge carriers, that is, with respect to the majority as well as the minority. But in this case, it is a conduction depends upon only the majority charge carriers that is represented as a unijunction trunk means again in the actually in this uh, bjt we have the two junctions one is uh, defined as across the collector base junction another one is uh, defined as emitter base uh, junction so based on the construction of this bipolar junction transistor it forms the two junctions that is uh, one is defined as a collector base junction one is a defined as a emitter base junction but here it forms only the one junction and based on this it is called as the uni junction uh, transistor and if you are using this bipolar junction transistor in this bipolar junction transistor we can construct either using the a material like either n type as well as a p type to show these two by junctions we can form the by using the transistor is either npn transistor or a pnp transistor and we define like this this is the here it's shown as a one uh, npn transistor another one uh, it shows as a pnp transistor <laughs> So we have the two types of the transistor, NPN as well as the PNP transistor. But coming to this uh, unijunction transistor, it is also constructed by using the N-type material as well as the P-type material. Then, before going to this, again we know that in a N-type, the majority charge carriers are electrons and in a P-type, the majority charge carriers are holes. Based on the construction, this unijunction transistor contains only one junction and that is across the emitter side. And in this case, the UJT contains the three terminals. Here also in a BJT case, it contains the three terminals, namely it is represented as emitter, base as well as the collector. So where emitter is always give, gives the charge carriers to allow the conduction, it is passing through the base. And the collector is always collect the charge carriers, whatever the M charge carriers are emitted from the emitter goes to be collected by the collector. So based on this, and here the UGT is defined as a three terminal semiconductor, semi switching device. So means, semiconductor means so we have the semiconductor devices like it is made up with the uh, p-type materials as well as the n-type materials and based on that this terminal the unijunction transistor here it is a defined as a three terminal semiconductor switching device so already we discussed that so based on the construction the ujt has only one pn junction and along with the three load three leads so three leads means it is defined as three, three terminals. That is the reason it contains three leads. Hence, it is called as the unijunction transistor. So let us consider and 
how we are going to construct the circuit. For this case, the construction of this uh, unijunction transistor is a simple device. It consists of a, a bar, N-type bar, silicon material with a non-rectifying contact either end. Means those two ends are represented with a base one and a base two, along with a one more contact is allied to the the length to form the one junction that is called as a uni junction. So to construct this one, let us consider. So means here we are taking this is the n type bar. This is taken as n type bar. Here it is called as the semiconductor. It is acts as a semiconductor. And one end is defined as a so we have the L2 electrodes, and this electrode is represented as base 2, and this electrode is represented as a base 1. So at one place we are diffusing the a opposite material. We are diffusing the a opposite material that is nothing but a p-type material. So means this length of the bar we consider as the n-type bar. So in a opposite direction means in a one end is a non-rectifier. This is a nothing but a non-rectifying contents. So one end should be connected with the electrode. That electrode is a represented as a base two. Another side a electrode is made. That electrode is a represented as a base one. In opposite side we are diffusing the a, another material. There is a p-side material then it forms one junction means so why how we can say that is a junction means let us consider in a semiconductor a one half is a doped with a p-type material another half is a doped with a n-type material then the intersecting of these two materials is nothing but it forms the junction this is called as a junction similarly for this n-type bar for this, this is here n type bar is acts as a semiconductor material. For this semiconductor material, we are diffusing or we are adding this a p type material to the one side. So, means these two are interconnected at one place. P type material is interconnected with the n type material, hence it forms a one junction. This is called as a junction. And based on this construction, if you observe this construction of this uh, unijunction transistor, we have the only the one junction, hence it is called as the unijunction transistor. And where we in diffusing the P-side P-type material with the N-type semiconductor bar, and that terminal here it is connected with one electrode that is called as emitter. Hence, based on this. The construction of the a unijunction transistor. We have the three terminals. So in the initially we say that the unijunction transistor has the three legs and uh, one junction the unijunction device. Hence, based on this construction, we can say that this unijunction transistor contains only one junction and and the three leads are the three terminals. Those are represented with the uh, emitter, base one, and uh, base two. So this is the construction of the unijunction transistor. So here I am showing the same. So base one, this is the n type bar, and opposite to have the two electrodes. One electrode is represented as the base one, another electrode is represented as the base two. You know, one side we are diffusing the a p type uh, material, and then it forms a one junction. The junction is called as the p n junction. And across this P type, it is represented as emitter. And this is the symbolic representation. So we have the different symbols. So in effect, uh, we are showing like that. So this is a N channel J effect. But here, some a curve shape is there. It shows the emitter. And this is the current flow direction. And we have the two layers. One is uh, across the base one as well as uh, base two. So this terminal is base two. This one is the base one, and here this terminal is represented as emitter. But in the case of uh, FED, we have the three terminals like uh, drain and the source as well as the gate. So sim similarly looks like that one, but one small difference: this emitter is some 
a curse here to the year and this is emitter base one and uh, base two so before to going to understand the characteristics of this uh, unijunction transistor first we need to understand the internal structure so means and internally so this is uh, a length of the semiconductor bar means while constructing the circuit for and this ujt and we consider this is n type bar this complete n type bar it acts as a, a resistor channel or this channel contains some amount of the resistance hence that n type bar is divided into a resistance here one resistance is represented as rb2 means this resistance is connected to here then and here it is represented as rb1 now if you want to allow the conduction now we need to apply a some amount of the biasing voltages between the emitter and with respect to the base one as well as the base two so for the input side if you want to identify the input characteristics a biasing voltage is passing through the emitter with respect to the base one and uh, again so here which one gives the charge carriers we have the this is the length of the semiconductor bar and this length of the semiconductor bar is made up with uh, n type material and we know that in a uh, n type material the majority charge carriers are electrons if you want to diffuse these charge carriers we need to apply some amount of the force so hence this base one is a biased with a negative for the battery with respect to the base two so hence so due to this here the base one n type ends we are applying the negative force here and due to this negative force the majority charge carriers that is electrons are diffusing from this base one to the base region along with this formation of the pn reaction then ends it is connected with a, a biasing voltage that is represented as v2 means the voltage is applied between the base 1 to base 2 or base 2 to base 1 it is represented as vbb then hence it is connected to base 1 is connected to lower potential hence it is represented as ground and if you observe this internal construction here we have v doping again we are uh, diffusing the uh, opposite material to form the one junction and that is nothing but a uh, this is the one pn junction so this is p side material and this is n is connected with so this n is connected with again n so n this is the n junction and for this terminal is represented as emitter so this is the internal or internal construction so our internal structure of the unijunction transistor means this length of the semiconductor bar is a replace it means it is acts as a channel the channel is acts as a contain the resistance hence that length of the channel is a divided into two resistances here one resistance is a defined with a base one resistance another one is a base two rb1 and rb2 rb1 is a connected to lower potential rb2 is connected to a bbb potential and across this one in a for this semiconductor pair we are diffusing the p side material to form the one junction and this is nothing but a one pn junction hence it is called as the uni junction and emitter side this material is made up with a p type and it is intersected with a n type hence it looks like this is the internal structure of the so condition so now we need to analyze let's say this is a normal configuration now we need to analyze and if you observe uh, the pn junction diode let us take this is the normal pn junction diode p and the n type so in this p and the n type we know that if you want to allow the characteristics or to identify the behavior of the this pn junction diode we need to apply the some biasing conditions and let us take and uh, we know that from the normal pn junction diode principle diode is a conducting under only the forward bias means when a p type material is connected to positive pole of the battery and n type material is connected to negative pole of the battery 
then we can say that this pn junction diode is works under the forward bias means that when it allows the conduction means most of the cases your anode voltage or uh, means this is the represented as anode and this is the represented as cathode means anode voltage must be greater than or equal to cathode voltage so anode voltage must be greater than or equal to cathode voltage what is anode voltage means anode is made up with a p type material and the cathode is made up with a, a n type material. generally actually for a normal p and i we say that your applied input voltage is just greater than or the cutting voltage then the diode starts the conduction that is represented as a V gamma. So what is the V gamma? V gamma is either 0.7 volts or it is the 0.3 volts. So whenever the PN junction diode is made up with a silicon diode, the cutting voltage of the silicon diode is 0.7 voltage. Whenever the PN junction diode is made up with a germanium, the cutting voltage is 0.3 volts. So that is the reason. Your applied input voltage must be greater than of this cutting voltage, then only diode starts the conduction. Based on this principle, in applications, I am going to utilize this principle. The anode voltage must be greater than or equal to cathode voltage, then only we can say that diode is conducting state, hence that conducting state is represented as on state. If anode voltage is less than of the cathode voltage, we can say that diode is acts as a non-conducting state, hence diode state is represented as off state. So by using this principle, by using this principle, now we need to identify how much energy is required. Why? Because of that, this cathode is interconnected with the length of the semiconductor bar. So if you observe this one, this is the cap emitter is emitter is a diffused with a or it is a contacted with the n type semiconductor bar ends we need to observe how much energy is required to start the conduction of this diode so n so we have let us say before this is anode and this is a cathode and based on this principle we need to identify I, when the diode is our own condition, whenever anode must be greater than of cathode voltage, then only we can say that diode starts the conduction. Under this point, we need to observe how much potential barrier is or how much potential is uh, generates with respect to the DC biasing. That is, uh, the biasing is applied between base 1 and a base 2 along with the internal resistances that is rb1 and uh, rb2 so hence from this representation here i am going to find out means how much node voltage is absorbed so for this case let us construe that part and here it is represented as rb2 it is a biased with a biasing voltage is a vbb and let us take this is my node voltage across the cathode side vk and then it is a bias the internal resistance is rb1 it is connected to ground now we need to find out how much voltage drop is generates across this node that is i'm going to find out vk so we have the two options one is you can use the uh, voltage division rule or we can apply the some KVL analysis. So if you apply the voltage division rule means how much current let us take the current is a flowing sum is I means we need to find out the node voltage across this RB1 resistance hence VK is equal to it is represented as I into RB1. So from this circuit from this circuit what is a I? So from the circuit, what is I? I is nothing but a V by R. V means what is the voltage source for this one? The voltage source is VBB. So R means the total resistance. What is the total resistance? RB1 plus RB2. Hence, from this voltage division rule, the VK is represented as I into RB1. So what is I? I is nothing but VBB by rb1 plus rb2 
two into R B one, and from this the V K is represented as I am writing like this R B one by R B one plus R B two into V B B. Or it is also represented as V K is equal to R B one by. This is the total resistance from the base one to base two ends. I am representing like this R B B times V B B. Where this R B B is represented as the summation of base one resistance and the base two resistance. It is represented as the summation of base one resistance and the base two resistance. And this is the voltage division rule. Suppose if you are applying the KVL principle, suppose if you are applying the KVL principle, and for this says now for the circuit for the circuit, I am writing the KVL means from this node to VBB numeral, the potential difference is VK minus VBB by RB two plus again from this node to lower potential. That is lower potential is zero. V K minus to the resistance is R P one. That is equal to zero. So we can expand it out. This is V K by R B two minus V B B by R B two plus V K by R B one. That is zero by something is zero. That is equal to zero. Now here V K by R B two plus V K by R B one that is equal to V B B by R B two. Now if I am taking this one, so the V K is a common. Now it becomes one by R B two plus one by R B one that is equal to V B B by R B two. If I take in the L C M, what happens here? This is so means that if the V K is a common, R B one Plus R B two by R B two into R B one that is equal to V B B by R B two. So this R B two R B two is a get cancel. So from this, what we can write from this, the V K is equal to V K is equal to V B B into R B one by R B one plus R B two. So here yeah, again, so we know we observe this one. V K is equal to V B B into R B one by R B one plus R B two. So it is also represented as how we can write like this means. So from that also we observe. So V K is equal to V B B into that R B one by the total resistance is R B B B. So from this means already we observe this one. V K is equal to R B one by R B B into V. So and this one, this ratio I consider as here. This ratio here it is a considered as intrinsic standoff ratio. This ratio is called as intrinsic standoff ratio, and that I consider as R B one by R B one plus R B two R is equal to R B one by R B B. Ends. The cathode across the cathode side, the potential due to the internal construction, the potential voltage is generates across the cathode tunnel is eta times of V B B. That is the reason in a circuit here I represented as this is eta times of V B B, where eta is a intrinsic standoff ratio that is represented as R B one by R B one plus R B. Suppose. If we consider if uh, R B one is equal to R B two, let us consider if the R B one is equal to R B two. So let if uh, R B one is equal to R B two, eta becomes. So what is the eta condition? R B one by R B one plus R B two means R B one by two times of R B one so means one by two is equal to zero point five, and let us consider the V B B is equal to ten volts. Now V K becomes eta times of V B B. What is the eta value here? Zero point five, and the V B B is ten means this is five volts. Means, and how much energy is required? Means this is the condition is to. 
to switch on means to conduct the diode what is the condition we observe your anode voltage must be given or equal to cathode voltage then only we can say the diode is enters into the conducting state the state is represented as on state otherwise means if the va is less than of this cathode voltage diode is non conducting state the state is represented as off state hence under this condition how much voltage is required to trigger the state from the on state to off state or off state to on state of the unijunction transistor so for this unijunction transistor if you want to trigger the condition from the off state to the on state your emitter voltage must be greater than of eta times of vbb your emitter voltage must be greater than of or greater than or equal to eta times of vbb under this condition what we assumed here if rv1 is equal to rv2 if a vbb is a 10 volts means your applied input voltage must be greater than or equal to 5 volts then only the ujt changes the state from off state to the on state until it reaches to the 5 volts of your applied input voltage the ujt is in a off state so that is the basic principle of the unijunction transistor so by using this one now we are going to observe the characteristics of the unijunction transistor so for this case you can apply suppose let us consider and for this uh, unijunction transistor and in this case the unijunction transistor is also satisfies the negative resistance region what we observed in a uh, like a tunnel diode so what is the negative resistance region if a v is increases current is a decreases or v is a decreases current is increases to clear understanding of this principle the x axis is represented as uh, current and the y axis here is represented as a uh, voltage let us consider uh, for the internal structure of the unijunction transistor and this is the unijunction transistor the internal structure and we represented as this is rb2 and it is represented as rb1 it is biased with a lower potential it is a biased with the vbb and how much energy is uh, ab absorbed with respect to the internal condition that is eta times of uh, vbb and let us take this is emitter and here we are going to apply a biasing voltage between the emitter and the base means now across this emitter terminal we are going to absorb how much emitter current is absorbed and how much emitter current is uh, flows and let us consider like if there is no biasing voltage between emitter and uh, base one so means what happens if there is no according to normal pn junction diode principle if there is no biasing voltage means there is no flow of or moment of the charge carriers from the one region to the another region hence there is no conduction takes place under this point the current is uh, represented as zero under the point the current is uh, represented as zero means let us take this is normal pn junction diode and here this is unbiased condition means we are not applying any external field to and this pn junction diode that is nothing but a unbiased pn junction diode so here also we have the two conditions one is unbiased ujt condition and uh, the second one we are going to observe the biased ujt condition biased ujt condition let us consider in an unbiased condition of ujt means here there is no external force is passing through the emitter with respect to the base one and now we are going to observe how much emitter current and uh, emitter voltage is up means why because of the there is no movement of the or there is no diffusing the charge carriers on the one region to other region hence the current is represented as zero here so input is a zero as well as the current is a zero now we'll see what happens what happens if um, what happens if um, the applied uh, energy is under the forward direction in a biased condition so in a biased condition again we have the two types of condition 
one is forward bias another one is reverse bias if it is a forward bias means and this is a made up with emitter this side is a made up with a p type material so hence whenever the p is biased with a positive pole of the battery then we can say that uh, that is uh, acts as a forward bias whenever the p is connected with the negative pole of the battery then we can say that uh, that is reverse bias condition now and based on the internal construction of the ujt as well as the working principle of the ujt we observe that when the ujt is triggers from the off state to the on state so if you want to trigger the ujt condition or to if you want to switch the switch the state from the off state to the another state that anode voltage means the emitter voltage must be greater than of the cathode voltage across the cathode side we observe that the internal due to that internal potential barrier and due to the internal resistance we have that is eta times of vb hence your anode emitter voltage must be greater than or equal to eta times of vb so let us consider the initially so let us consider and at this point so at this point and i am going to apply the input voltage and i am going to increase the vi in a previous case what we observed let us we assume that if rb1 is equal to rb2 and we consider that vbb is equal to 10 times hence the eta times of vbb we observed as 5 volts means your emitter voltage must be greater than or equal to 5 volts then only we can say that the ujt changes the state from off state to on state and to if you want to understand this uh, the characteristics of this ujt again once again i'm recalling the diode principle whenever the diode is in a on state the voltage across the diode is equal to current voltage but ideally we know that this is a practical if it is ideally the voltage across the diode is equal to zero but the conduction is increased the conduction rate is increases whenever the diode is in a off state non conducting state we know that the voltage across the diode is approximately equal to your applied input voltage that is v in but the current is zero so it does not allow the conduction means under the non conducting state the voltage across the diode is proportional to applied input voltage but current is very very small and and when we are applying this forward biasing voltage to for this pujt means the input voltage your vi he is passing through this emitter let us consider that input is ve and based on the internal construction and uh, due to this internal resistances along with the dc biasing voltage vbb between the base 1 and the base 2 we observe the under this my assumptions i assume that the emitter voltage must be given or equal to 5 volts then only ujt is triggers from the off state to the on state so hence let us consider here the x axis is represented as current emitter current and the y axis is represented as emitter voltage so let us say this is a ve and this is represented as emitter current i so initially and goes on changing from let us say this is zero and this is taken as suppose um, a 1 volt and 2 volt like 3 volt like 4 volt like this is suppose 5 volts so if it is a 1 0 volts and for this case let us consider so if i am applying the zero here and at this point we have the 5 volts so means anode side we are approaching the 0 volts but cathode side contain the 5 volts why because based on our assumption my assumption so what happens here at this point diode is enters for zero volts diode is in a off state hence if the diode is in off state v not is approximately equal to v in current is zero hence that is the reason 
the voltage is a zero volts current is also zero volts now i'm going to consider the input is a one volt if the input is a one volt means across this side this is a one volt and a cathode side five volts means again emitter voltage is less than of the cathode voltage hence we can say that diode is again uh, for this one volt also diode is off state if the diode is off state v naught is equal to v in means that is one volt but current is a zero hence so your voltage is increases like this then current is an again uh, zero point similarly with respect to like that suppose if i am applying the three volts here i am applying the three volts you goes on increasing this forward bias voltage and but what happened this is and across the anode side we are approaching the three volts but cathode side we have the five volts hence for this three volts also diode is enters into the non-conducting state that is nothing but a off state if it is a non-conducting state again the v naught is proportional to v in that is three volts again the current is zero hence it is enters into the three volts so like that the four volts also diode is non-conducting state if it is a five volts then what happens so if it is your emitter voltage is greater than or equal to cathode voltage now the ujt is changing from the off state to the on state. means let us take whenever emitter voltage is reached to 5 volts and the cathode is also 5 volts at this point at this point whenever we are approaching the 5 volts to across the emitter side what happens diode becomes on state whenever the diode is enters into the on state whenever the diode is enters into on state what happens your output voltage is approximately equal to cut in voltage then conduction rate is starts to the increase so that is the reason whenever whenever it reaches to your emitter voltage is greater than or equal to cathode voltage at this point ujt changes the state from this point up to this state the ujt state is represented as off state at this point ujt is a triggers from this off state to the on state whenever it triggers the change state from the off state to the on state what happens the voltage going to be maybe getting to reduce and the conduction rate is uh, increase means which conduction rate is increases the flow of current is increases i is increases and that is the reason if it goes on increasing so if it is above 5 volts also the uj is in a, again on state if the uj is a on state voltage is going to be reduced and the current is increased so that is the reason from this peak voltage that is the reason this voltage at which region at which region the ujt changes the state from off state to on state that voltage is called as the peak voltage and that point is called as the peak point at which point the ujt triggers the state from the off state to the on state that state is represented as the peak point at this peak point even though if you are increasing the forward voltage means what happens so v is increases means your applied input voltage is increases the applied input voltage is increases current is increases across the emitter but voltage across the emitter is decreases why because of that whenever the diode is in a on state the voltage across the diode is reached to cutting point so that is the reason at this point up to the off state the voltage across the ujt is represented the 5 volts but whenever the this ujt triggers from the off state to on state what happens conduction rate is increases and this is the conduction rate is increases but voltage is trying to reach to cut in voltage so hence this is the condition is satisfied when we are applying the a forward biasing voltage across the ujt condition and based on this properties this region and this is a valley voltage valley point so whenever it reaches to the a minimum voltage and and under this peak voltage to valley voltage it satisfy this characteristics and this characteristics or belongs to negative resistance region so at which point again the current becomes a saturator so hence the current is uniform kind so that is the reason
and under this followed by as voltage whenever your applied input voltage or emitter voltage is greater than or equal to cathode voltage or eta times of vpb then only the ujt changes the state from off state to the on state suppose if i take the reverse voltage also so what is the reverse voltage suppose minus 1 minus is less than of zero is less than of zero also but cathode side we have the 5 volts means analog voltage here is less than of eta times of vbb ends even though if you are applying the reverse voltages the ujt is in a off state only that is the reason this graph shows this region is entire the region is less than of the zero so this is less than of the zero region at this case also the ujt state is represented as off state so that is the reason if the ujt is an off state the voltage across the emitter is equal to applied input voltage but the current is equal to zero hence i shown this the voltage is approximately equal to how much input voltage we are passing and current is represented as zero hence from this characteristics based on this principle of the ujt and from the characteristics of the unijunction transistor we define the three regions of ujt one is the cutoff region one is the negative resistance region one is the saturation region and what how what is the cutoff region at which point or, or below that uh, peak point the ujt is in a off state that state is represented as cutoff state at which point the ujt is triggers the state from the off state to the on state and that state is called as the on state so in on state we observe that the conduction rate is increases across the emitter but the voltage across the emitter is decreases hence that region characteristics are called as the negative resistance region characteristics and at which point the current becomes a constant and that region here it is called as the saturation region so this is the complete uh, working principle of the unijunction transistor along with the uh, internal structure operation now in the another uh, diode is there another uh, special purpose diode that is nothing but a varactor diode and this varactor diode is uh, majorly depends upon is works with the uh, only the reverse bias so in this case the diode whose internal capacitance so in a normal pn junction diode we observe that the capacitor means the diode is also offer the two types of the parameters one is a uh, resistance as well as a uh, capacitance so based on that uh, uh, behavior of the diode it offers the forward resistance as well as the reverse resistance along with diode is also offers the two types of the capacitances that is diffusion capacitance as well as the transition capacitance and based on that principle here this varactor diode is uh, designed so in this case the diode here the whose internal capacitance varies with the variation of the reverse voltage so means so that this is the normal diode and the doping concentration is very means the doping concentration is slightly different compared with a normal pn junction diode and here it is uh, operated with uh, a reverse bias voltage or reverse voltage means reverse voltage means suppose if you take the pn junction diode this is p type material and uh, n type material means this p is connected with a negative pole of the battery and uh, n is connected with a first pole of the battery then it is called as a, it is operated with a reverse voltage and this type of the special diode is known as varactor diode so it is majorly used for to store the charge so means q is equal to in terms of c so the charge is measured in terms of q is equal to c into v and so this varactor diode is always works in the reverse bias and it is a voltage dependent uh, semiconductor device so let us take under the reverse bias mean if you consider the normal pn junction diode and this is the intersecting point p type material and this is n type material and in this case if the p is biased with the negative pole of the battery and the n is biased with the 
positive pole of the battery ends it under this reverse bias we know that the majority charge carriers here these are the holes and here the majority charge carriers are electrons these are the electrons due to this approaching of an external field these are the electrons are diffusing from towards the battery and here the holes are also diffusing towards the negative pole of the battery ends it forms the large uh, depletion width it forms it creates the a large uh, depletion width so here it shows some amount of energy means what how much type of energy stores here so means this negative charge particulars are becomes now immobile ions it becomes a positive ions it becomes whenever the electron is attracting towards a positive pole of the battery then it becomes the a positive immobile ion and similarly the hole is a positive charge particular hence it becomes the it establishes the a negative immobile ions so this creation of a positive and a negative immobile ions near by the junction then it forms the some amount of energy this is nothing but a, a potential barrier or a space charge region so this potential barrier so this potential barrier or a space charge region contains some energy so means that will be stored in terms of charge so due to this with respect to this principle here this varactor diode is a work so based on this construction here i shown that this is the symbolic representation and this is means to satisfy the capacitance principle which acts as a parallel plate capacitor and this is p side and this is the n side and this is acts as a, a depletion region and that depletion region is acts as a, a capacitance principle means if you observe this one this is one conducting plate p side is a conducting plate and n is also one conducting plate between the two conducting plates we have we are creating the one insulating media so means it acts as a, a parallel capacitor so this is the symbolic uh, representation of varactor diode so up to this point today we observed the the construction of the unijunction transistor and the characteristics of the unijunction transistor also we observed that uh, varactor diode thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates